Time to go to the auditorium. Yeah, let's see how this one goes, shall we? Um, ahem. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the premiere screening of my latest work, A Naval Advance, No Sub for Love. You know, I just realized that apparently the sub for love means no substitute for love. Again, I think this is supposed to be a Titanic parody, but I could be wrong. The story begins with a young couple who meet at a ramshackle old cinema out in the sticks. Wait, why are you explaining the movie? Isn't it best for people to, you know, actually see the movie? The man wants to become a film director, while the girl nurses her dream of being an actress as she waits tables in a local cafe. The tunnel event sees a pair on a luxury cruise ship, cruise ship together, and they fall more and more in love as time goes on. But then, something terrible happens. The ship, a relic from an ancient civilization, starts to sink into the sea. What? Again, why are you telling all of this? Wouldn't it be better for people to, you know, actually see it? Mind you, okay, I get it. You're not actually going to show the, the movie here in the game. Mind you, that would be hilarious in my opinion. But, again, I get why. So, they probably need to explain it like this. But still, this is so bad as a director. Because the last thing you need is for, you know, people to already know what's going to happen in the movie and then there are no actual surprises for them. What the actual heck? The situation is desperate, there seems to be no way out, the couple are doing everything they can to survive. Ah, ah, well, I, I think I'd better stop there. I don't want to spoil your enjoyment, enjoyment of the story after all. I think you kind of already did. I mean, yeah, sure, there's still the plot hook of what happens after, but you kind of just said most of what the hell was supposed to happen in the movie. Or in the first part of the movie, at least. Or first act, maybe? I'll just finish by saying that this film is a culmination of years of work and marks. I believe, oh, and marks, I believe, the pinnacle of my career. And again, this movie is about him, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like his youth, or it's most likely his youth, but over exaggerated, which tend to happen in movies, so yeah, not the worst. I'm sure you're all going to love it. Of course, it would never have been possible without the support of, of so many people. The fantastic actors, the cameramen and women, the sound crew, my assistant artistic directors, the editing staff, and above all, my wife, who has been a constant sort of source of encouragement and never stops believing in me. Again, this feels like it's telling your story, but again, overly rom romanticized and fantasized. I like to say an enormous thank you once again and everyone involved in the production. So without further ado, I present to you a naval advance, no self for love. Okay, okay, 
First off, the voice acting on the woman was horrendous. We're gonna die in the laugh. Oh my god, I internally cringed and laughed. Oh my god, that, that was horrible. Also, what? Why were you gonna die? Why did the bullet start slowly changing to a sub? Which, by the way, it should have started sinking when it started changing to a sub, because there was gonna, gonna be a lot of water going inside of it. Oh. You know what? I think I'm, I'm thinking too much. I'm thinking way too much about this. What the actual heck? Okay, now. What's going on? What ha what's happened to my film? Why is it cut there? No, this isn't right. The last scene. The kiss scene. The big finale. Someone stole it! Okay, okay, now I know why it's called the stolen kiss. Now I know how you can steal a kiss. But no. Excuse me, Mr. Banon. Has everyone left now? Yep, that's the end of that. We've had to cancel the screening, so I sent everyone home. You're a friend of Miss Layton's now, aren't you? Well, I'm not sure if friend is the right word, but, well... Amelia, Emiliana Perfetti. I'm a case analyst and profiler at Scotland Yard. This theft of the cinematic scene of the film is a very serious offense. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some questions about it. Yes, could you tell us what you know about the events leading to the discovery of the missing scene? And look at that, Charles all in all inside. Catriel, what are you still doing here? Am I then hound with you? Hey! Well, everyone else has left now, so I thought Cheryl could help sniff up clues. We don't need any zoofy around. Keep your nose and your dog's nose out of business, that doesn't concern you. But it does concern us. Mr. Barnon is personally requested that I stay and help. Hmm. You bet I did. Talk about luck, having a Scotland Yard officer and a private eye on sight. <laughs> You know, this actually does bring a good question. What is the normal relationship between a private eye and most of the police force? Because... Honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit confused, but then again, it probably isn't that bad, because... Private eyes, again, they're more... People with money or desperate to go for these people to... Get clues, discover mystery, discover secrets and all of that, maybe film people. While the police is more... In general for most crime-solving problems. So I can somewhat understand there not be that much of a confusion between the more like conflict between these two kinds of work, but still. Anyway, I'd like to ask both of you to help figure out what happened here. Who the heck cut that key scene out of the film, huh? If you didn't consult this case, it's the woman who figured out the Riverside Festival shenanigans. Haha! <laughs> is, is that right, Catriel? You'll take on the case, won't you? Well, I couldn't very well turn you down after the glowing praise, could I? Of course I'll take on the case. Any Mr. Saul, that's my motto. Mr. Barnum, please. I am more than capable of handling this case. Leave it to the expert at Scotland Yard. Now, now, I'm not saying I don't think you're a talented detective as well, Miss Perfetti. But a little competition should make you both work hard. Ha <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. Healthy competition can make people work hard. I don't think he's taken too far, yeah, that kind of becomes a problem. Va bene, you soon see that I pinpointed the truth much more quickly than this so-called detective. I'm kind of curious, is she like French or something like that? Because I don't think I like heard her speak. Or if we haven't, probably in the past scene and I'm more than I forgot. Who knows? Haha, <laughs> that's the spirit. Good luck to the booth. Well, don't just stand around here chatting at me. You better be running along to get a statement from old director, haven't you? Where is he now, do you know? Sure do. He's right over there, still totally dumbfounded, poor guy. He put his heart and soul into that final kiss scene. It's kind of hard to understand why anyone would have done this, I must admit. Still, that's for you two ladies to figure it out, isn't it? Ha ha ha! Okay, so wait, what, what was the point of... Wait, so... Oh, oh, it's still, it's still only her, okay. But wait, what was the point of making us go out and then in? Yeah. 
Okay, so apparently there's nothing here, okay. Do you have anything to show to present to me? This is your time to shine now, Catriel. Let's see what you're made of. Yeah, no, they don't say anything. Let's see what you have to say. Ah, my film! My magnum opus! Please, Mr. Rector, don't worry. I will personally track down the thief responsible for stealing the last scene. No, you won't, because I'll track down whoever did it first, Catriel. Very professional, ladies. Very professional. Again, I kind of understand where Cheryl is coming from here, but again, a little healthy competition does help people work harder, I suppose. And if I had to take a guess, I'd say that the criminal is that guy that we saw in the beginning that, you know, opens brackets and closed brackets to say some stuff. I don't know, it just feels like him, because again, we don't have any other quote-unquote Obvious suspects to go by. It was perfect. I made every last detail perfect before I was willing to show it to the public. And now this. Sure, the negatives are still available. You'll be able to produce a new reel for another screening, won't you? But didn't you see the audience reaction? They were frustrated. Without that final scene, the story doesn't hang together at all. I wanted to give people the perfect film. I put my whole life into this project, my heart and soul. I understand, Mr. Rector, but try not to let it get you down. I will track the, down the preparator. Prepper. Yeah. Preparator. Don't worry. Try not to get me down. Are you mad? This is a disaster. A boy like this before the official release is a death knell for my for any film. Okay. And just when I thought that it made it made it to the big time, when I got into the top studios, ah. Now it's back to trying to make ends meet again. Really? You are struggling? Interesting. Why am I going to tell my crew? I thought I'd finally be able to pay them what they're due. This is terrible. Please, try to calm down. Now tell me. Do you have any suspicions at all about who could be responsible? Responsible for the desecration of my work? Obviously someone who doesn't like my films. Uh, how am I going to face my crew? My life even. They were all on the... Enter hooks. Wait to see how the artist reacted. I just wanted the ground to open and swallow me up. I, I wish I was in the silver ring right now, sinking. Um, yes. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Rector. Sinking, sinking. Well, you got your wish. Oh dear, he's really taking this battle, isn't he? Yeah, ridiculous. So, uh, I give up. I'll try talking to him again once he's calmed down. You can't blame the guy for being upset. The movie, the movie was a big deal to him. And again, he's all, Phoenix is also right, he's exactly right about this. It's because, well, he's like I said, he's poor everything. And filmmaking isn't just a work, for it's like a passion. So, again, I'm pretty sure every creator will understand if you have your work done and then someone ruins it, slanders it, it's not gonna feel good. And he's not the only one who's troubled by what happened either. I'm kind of sorry myself. Well, as I imagine you would be. This is going to affect sales for you, after all. <laughs> I like the way you think, Missy, but it's not just that. I'm a big fan of Rector's work, you see. I was looking forward to the whole world finally seeing what a great director he really is. Now this, now this has happened. All that talent could go to waste if you're not careful. So you two ladies better get a move on and figure out what happened. The stone scene. If it will help, I'll give you access to anywhere in the theater. In fact, I'll just text Dell Security to give you free reign. There's a projection box around the back. Normally it's out of bounds, but I don't mind you going in there to investigate if you need to. The projection box. Aha! Thank you, Mr. Bannon. What are you waiting for? Let's hide tell it over to the projection box. Yes, I agree. We should start by investigating the film now. Is there something wrong, Liliana? I've come to expect irrational behavior from you, Catriel. But really, talking to your dog. Yes, it's wonderful. Th it's wonderfully therapeutic. You should really try it sometime. Anyway, are you coming with us to the projection box? No, I will be carrying out investigations elsewhere for this. Okay, to speak to Liliana talking that cat was being weird to talk to Cheryl. 
again, as someone who probably doesn't own a pet, I kind of understand where she's going. But when you own a pet, you kind of just start talking to them like they are your people. And, well, more like babies, but still, you start talking to them and they sometimes respond to you in their own way. So, yeah, there is that. I would know. As you guys know, I have two cats, one of which loves getting away from recording. Every single time. I'm talking about uniques. How much you seem to put me off and I might miss something crucial. You see, Catrell, every criminal, no matter how careful, leaves a trail of telltale signs following a crime. Yeah, except you weren't able to figure out it was the mayor that did it. Okay. Only a skilled profi profiler like myself can win them, of course. Which is why I will solve this case long before you do and prove the superiority of my methods. I'll look forward to it. <clears throat> don't mock it. Don't mock me. Fabene, you'll be we'll see soon enough. I really wasn't mocking you, I am looking forward to it. <clears throat> Hello, until later, Catrio. Just try not to disturb the scene too much, won't you? Okay, let's go there then. What do you have to say? Now then, what we know about the criminal so far tells us mainly that we can do without so-called private detective interfering with our investigation. You are in the way, Catriel. Wow, mini. Jesus Christ. So this is what's inside the projection box. Projection box looks like. What a lot of machinery. I can't, I'm literally curious. Do movies still project using film reels? I actually don't know that. I was just really curious now. I'll probably, I'll probably check it later and tell you guys. Um, excuse me. Authorized personnel all in here, please. Have you asked? I'll have to ask you to leave. Um, I wonder what this machine does. Stop! Don't touch Albertina. Albertina? Yes, Albertina. She's brand new. If you touch her, it could put her totally out of alignment. She's very cranky. Not like old Rosalinda next to her there. She's much better behaved. But true, but true, she is. Albertina is delicate. Uh oh, black color. This jo that job's named all of his equipment. I mean. To be fair, some people do do that, not because it's supposed to, you know, be crazy, but just because, ah, it's fun. Albertina and Rosalind, what lovely names you've come up for, for, with for your machines. Don't touch, please, I'm going to have to see statue leave now. It's alright, Mr. Barnard gave us permission to investigate in here. Investigate? Sorry, I should have introduced myself, I'm Catriel Layton of the Leighton Detective Agency. These are my assistants, Ernest and Cheryl. We are investigating the dis disappearance of the final scene of No Sub for Love. At least she decided to, you know, make the name smaller. Would you mind telling us who you are? I presume you are a member of the technical staff here in the, here in the theater. Wait, I just saw. He, his eyeballs, the dots. They're going inside his eyelids. What the actual hell is this? Oh yes, I'm Seymour Frames. Really, Seymour Frames? Ugh. Eh, but again, that does actually work because he's working with frames. Frames, so okay. I'm the Save Lois project projectionist. I see. And what do you do? Uh, well, Miss, the projectionist is responsible for setting up the film and controlling the equipment during screenings. I must say, it sounds like a rather spiffy job. Spiffing job. Just think of all the films we've got to see. Don't make like a light of it. Being a projectionist carries huge responsibilities and demands incredible attention to detail. Yeah, attention to detail that is apparent to you for you were paying attention because one entire part of the film got stolen, apparently. I have to keep a constant eye on the running of the film, fine-tune all the machines, and make sure the projectors are in exactly the correct position at all times. 
There is never any downtime in my job. I have to spot all the motor motor cues and make sure I'm ready for the real change orders as well. Golly, it sounds awfully complicated. It is, but I won't have any, any other job. I'm happy in here, surrounded by, my, by machines. But people always think it's a doodle, and it's not. It sounds like he's more interested in the machine than the films you're showing. Yes, I think we need to ask Mr. Frames a few more questions. And we'll do that after investigate. Is this a toucan? Oh look, Miss Titan. There's a bird in this cage. It's a my minor bird, I think. I thought it was a raven at first. Raven met like someone else in this room. Miners are talking birds, aren't they? Yes, that's right. I bet he can say all kinds of things, can't he, Mr. Frank? Yeah, I've taught the major taught the major quite a few words. But I introduce yourself, Major. Come on, say hello. Hello, I'm the Major. Major Mania, Major Mania. So it's kinda of like a parrot, it's us say. He really does talk. So what? Many birds do. Dog on the other hand. Oh, that's something special. I mean, yeah, I guess. Would you mind if I tried to get him to say something? Sure, go ahead. He's pretty sharp. He'll probably talk over, talk for you. Oh, goody. Come along, miss. Let's try this. Let's try. This will be such a lark. Hello. How are you? How are you? He's very polite, isn't he? Sure, why don't you try talking to him? Perhaps he'll be able to understand each other. Can you speak Swahili just because you're human? I only speak dog, alright? Not bird. Really? You never told me that before. You never told me if you can speak Swahili. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> the point is, so far I've only met a few humans who can understand what I'm saying. Maybe there are some birds or cats out there who understand me as well. But I've never met any of them if there are. Hmm. I didn't know why there were all these limitations on what you can and can't do. What a disappointment. Oh sure, I'm such a disappointment. Because a talking dog is so mundane. Oh well, I suppose I'd have to try to communicate with the bird myself. So Major, you to see the film thief? Saw the thief. Saw the thief. Jeepers, really? Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Oh, he's just repeating what we're saying. Yes, who did it? You did it! You did it! Of course I didn't do it! Didn't do it! Didn't do it! Haha! <laughs> Who's a pretty wally then? Who's a pretty wally then? Gosh, he even tells jokes! Amazing! Yeah, side splitting. I told you the Major is very sharp. A genius, really. Alright then, Major, if you're so sharp, you'll understand why I'm gonna explain. What? I'll. Do to you if you make fun of me again. Ah, call the RSVP. Call the RSVP. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Miss Lathan is only a bird, remember? I know he talks like a human, but you really can't treat him like one. <laughs> major hunger, major hunger. Popcorn, popcorn. Sorry, Major. I'm all of popcorn now. Oh yes, of course! What is it, miss? Have you cracked it? Have you seen the heart of the case already? No, no, this is far more important than that. Oh, really? I forgot all about my new during popcorn, I wanted to try! I knew it! Mania bird, apparently he's a clue. Okay, for those of you curious, the reason why I just take it so slowly when I'm moving like this is because, well, so um, is this one Albertina? So is this one? Is it? I again, like I was saying, the reason I move so slow is because I know it's, it's somewhat sensitive, so if I push it too far, it'll go skyrocketing away. So I need to slow. No, no, no. That's Rosalinda. Albertina's on one next to her. 
Oh, I do apologize. Look, it's easy to tell. Albertine is the one with the beautiful curves. Rosalind is the one with the gleaming skin. Parking, completely parking. Of course, Albertine doesn't always listen to what you tell her. But that's just part of her charm. Is it? I... I see. Eh, <laughs> you're a cutie, Albertine. Yes, in Jerusalem. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten you. You really look after your machines, don't you, Mr. Frames? You're gleaming. Of course I do. It's vital to ensure all the equipment in here is in perfect working order every single day. Again, makes sense. Movies are open close to 24 7. The Catherine sisters over there are no exception. The Catherine sisters? Assistants of yours, are they? Uh, I think, miss, they're the names of the film reels. Oh, <laughs> yes, I can see that now. The Catherine reels. What a good name for them. You think so? I'm, I'm afraid I don't see it. Oh, cool. Makes sense. I know I probably need to talk to the guy I'm... Oh, first. Light. Of course. There's only one, two places to look here? I can be right, right? Huh. Oh, okay, so there was another hint point. Hint point here. Wait, what is this? Of course. Oh, ah, silly hatch. They certainly deserve investigation. Have you noticed something, Iris? I knew it! There's a puzzle on how to hear me, look! <laughs> Fraught Fishing 2 Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sharks on a pearl at a popular fishing spot and they're very hungry. They have three different types of bait to catch all the fish in the area. But you can't afford to throw all any bait too close to a shark or you'll nose and try to bite. Where would you throw your precious bait? Your bait attracts all the fish, including any shark within a certain range. Or when you throw it, or very oh, or very throw it, and each different type covers a different range. You can't throw bait directly on top of a fish? That might hurt them. Let's try this one. Ah, this one's a square. Okay, okay, okay. What about this one? Ah, I see. There, got it. Honestly, not that complicated. I've seen how to solve this now. Any mystery or any puzzle solved. You didn't. You caught. You caught loads of fish. That that's when I didn't take care of them. You just need to find somewhere, somewhere else selling chips with a healthy sprinkle of salt and vinegar to go with the fish. Wait. Healthy? Wait, why is it saying like a question mark there? 
Am I missing something? Oh, jolly good miss, you were inspiring to watch. The puzzle is solved, but the mystery of what lies behind the hatch remains. And I can't open it. Maybe not now, at least. Okay, let's talk to you, because apparently I think I found everything here. Wait. Yeah, no, I think I found everything. Excuse me, Mr. Frames, but couldn't you tell us what you were doing before the screen today? Hmm, if you're expecting me to talk to you, you can help me solve this puzzle first. Uh, I'm sorry, was the connection? Circuit Unbreaker. Oh god. A little girl's favorite toy has been broken. You, you found all of the bits, various ships and wires, but you need to work out where you, the circuit board they go in order to fix the toy. Ah yes, one of my worst, I don't know, things to do, circuitry, I'm horrible with this. Press on the whole day to pick up a component, you move it around, press on an art to rotate the component you're currently holding, wires can cross each other but the chips can't have anything running over them, or the toy won't work. Wait, oh these are the components, oh okay 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 okay. Okay, so maybe this one here goes here, this one goes here, by the way, I can rotate these things, right, right, right. No, wait. Right, they can't go there. Now, let me just, because this one here is either here or here. This one, I feel like it's here, right? Wrong. I mean, this one kind of takes minimal space. Oh, well, maybe this one here goes like this, then, right? No. No. Oh. My tiny pea brain. I'll just put it here because it looks pretty at this point. I honestly don't know what I'm doing. Uh... Wait! <gasps> yes! Sheer dumb luck for the win! I have a feeling that perhaps. Thank goodness I got that right. Agreed! Sheer dumb luck for the win, baby! <laughs> <laughs> you did it. fixing toys like this is a piece of cake to any electric whiz like you. Oh, trust me, I ain't an, ain't an electric whiz. Trust me. And the little girls over the moon to have their precious toy working again. Wait, where are the re recipes coming from? I kind of want to try that actually. I don't know why. Okay, that was pretty impressive. So, you'll talk to us now? I'd like to know what you were doing before the screen today. Fine, alright then. I was in here, of course, making sure all my issues were in tip-top working order. So you were the one who actually ran the film? Yeah, I was pretty shocked when the last real sudden skipped the scene. Oh, would you have any idea who might have stolen the kiss scene? Mm, no, not really. I mean, I really don't care. It's only a film, for goodness sake. Yes, about that, Mr. Frames. Even though you work in a cinema, you give the impression you don't really like films. Is that right? Obviously. It's the machines I love. Giving Albertini and Rosalind here over a stupid film any day. Oh, that reminds me. I've got to get Belinda cleaned up. You can't leave the spare equipment getting dirty just because you're not using it. This chap certainly does love his machines. I think it's this one, right? Yeah, it's this one. Machine Freak. Okay, so he currently... Seymour is currently... Or Mr. Frame, whatever you call He's currently our biggest suspect. 